Hey guys, it's Jill. Jen and I wanted to give you a heads up about the content on today's episode. It may be triggering for more sensitive audiences. Refer to the show notes for more specifics. And take care while you listen. On this episode of Common Mystics, we share a truly incredible story of Mary Draper Ingalls and her escape from Shawnee captivity. I'm Jennifer James. I'm Jill Stanley. We're psychics. We're sisters. We are Common Mystics. We find extraordinary stories in ordinary places. And today's story comes to you from Big Bone Lick, Kentucky in 1755. And this, you guys, is not another excuse to say Big Bone Lick, although we really <laughs> enjoy saying it. <laughs> How many other stories can we find around Big Bone Lick? <laughs> it's just so much fun to say. Okay, this is your girl. You, okay, you guys, you know what we do, right? We drive around the country. We use our psychic abilities to find verifiable stories previously unknown to us. But sometimes when we're doing the research, we fall in love with someone who wasn't a part of our original story. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that someone in spirit doesn't want to leave us alone. (laughs) And this woman was all up on Jennifer. Oh my gosh. So we bring you Mary Draper Ingalls. And she is she related to Don Draper? (laughs) She is not related to the character Don Draper on Mad Men. And nor is she related to Laura Ingalls of the Little House series. Okay. So who is she? Tell me everything I need to know. Well, first, let's tell our listeners, when we were on our road trip in South Carolina and Kentucky, we were feeling some hits that led us in one direction, right? Please refresh my memory. We were feeling tragedy with children and we were led to the Gaines Tavern. And of course, our last story was all about the Gaines Tavern and Margaret Garner, right, of Toni Morrison's novel Beloved and that tragedy. Yes, it was. 100%. And of course, when we were on the road, we were drawn to Big Bone Lick, but... We decided to take a a turn and not go there and, again, ended up at the historic Gaines Tavern. But there were other things that we were getting in the car, Jill. Do you remember the other hits that we didn't discuss before? There were a couple hits that you and I were discussing, notably the indigenous people of the area. Exactly right. We were both picking up on indigenous peoples. And not only that... There was another very specific reference that I think led us here to this story. Father Petit. Remind us who Father Petit was. We have an episode in, I believe, season one. Yes, it's episode six, Trail of Death. Yes, out of Indiana. And I'll tell you, we fell in love with Father Petit. He was a missionary who gave spiritual counsel to the natives of the area. Yes. And he loved the natives. He chose to stay with the natives, to live with the natives, to serve the natives, even though he was a white man, a French man. And that image, that Father Petit sort of archetype came to you when we were in the car and we wrote it down and didn't do anything of it, but it made sense in the context of this story. Ooh, tell me everything. Okay, so I'm going to give you a short summary first, just to tell everybody who Mary Draper Ingalls was. Does that sound good? I like it. Okay. Mary Draper Ingalls, and this is from Wikipedia, was a very early settler of Western Virginia. And in the summer of 1755, she and her two young sons were taken captive by a band of Shawnee Uh Uh-huh. She would successfully escape and would arrive home after two and a half months of trekking on foot, approximately 600 miles, crossing rivers, creeks, and the Appalachian Mountains. O-M-G. What a woman. For real. (laughs) Because I would have been like, I I like the Shawnees. (laughs) Yeah, right? (laughs) I would have been like, oh, I'm cool. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. There's so much here. I can't wait to get into it. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning of her life. She was born. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Mary Draper Ingalls was born in 1732 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 
Her parents were George and Eleanor Draper, and they had immigrated to America from Ireland. Nice. The Draper family moved to the western frontier of Virginia from Philadelphia. And then around 1744, when Mary was only 12 years old, her father, George Draper, would go on an exploratory trip into what is now West Virginia, and he would never return. I got to just say that this legitimately is my worst nightmare when I leave my cats out. Like when I open the door, I'm thinking, please come home. I know you're exploring, but you have to come back. It would be it's just tragic. Uh huh. And you never know where the kitty cat went. I can see that for sure. Yeah. No. And Mary was only 12 years old. Mm -mm, Tragic. Yeah. That must have changed her life for sure. I mean, what was he thinking, though? I'm saying. What was he thinking? He would leave his young family to go putz around in the frontier. Why? What was he looking I don't know. for? I don't, I don't understand. Get it. Stay with your family, dude. And think about it. Like they you are their only lifeline at this point. Like you're the man. It's the 1700s. You can't just go wandering off, bro. Yeah, no kidding. I don't know. Well, too bad we weren't there to advise him before he left and would never return. So anyway, uh, the following information is not only from Wikipedia, but also from the Boone County Public Library website. So much good stuff there. The Boone County is a great organization. The Boone County Library, like seriously, they they dig Mm -hmm, deep. mm -hmm. I'm not just saying it. So Mary Draper was 18 years old when she married 21 year old William Ingalls in 1750. Too young. (laughs) Too young. She had her whole life ahead of her. She needed to like go out. She needed to drink. She needed to mingle. She needed to party a little bit before settling down. Yeah, let her hair down, Mary. What are you thinking? Just the first William that comes along. Okay, go on. They established a home in this little area called Draper's Meadows. It was near the Mm -hmm. home of Mary's families and William's families. And it was a settlement of about 10 people. And it was located in Augusta County, Virginia. It sounds gorgeous. Yeah, doesn't it? It Little little community of people working together. Seems totally peaceful and quaint. Mm -hmm. In 1751, about a year after they were married, Mary and William had a son named Thomas. Aw. Uh huh. And then another son named George was born in 1753. Now, Mm -hmm. when the Ingalls and the Drapers, when those two families came and settled in Drapers Meadow in Augusta County. When they first settled mm-hmm. there, relations with the local indigenous people were pretty peaceful. Oh, mm-hmm. good. But I like when everyone can get along. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there were some skirmishes between the Shawnee peoples and the Catawba people to the south. But really, it was like not a big deal, you know, and, and things were fine. Nice. But that would soon come to change. Why? There was a conflict that's known in the United States as the French and Indian War. I heard about it. Mm-hmm. It started in 1754. Hold on. Wait, real quick historical recap. French and Indian War, the natives and the French people got together to fight against the British. Um, Yes, kind of. It was really a British-French sort of fight over the territories on the continent, but they both mm-hmm. had allies. So the British allied up with the natives, and then the French allied up with some of the other natives. And so the Shawnee lined up with the French. Mm. And so the Shawnee were attacking English or, you know, British settlements. Oh, gotcha. Y- Right? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Oh, you see Shawnees. Yeah, the French manipulated them to hurt the well, English. I mean, well manipulated. I mean, they signed treaties. They wanted the land. You know what? I think what the Europeans did was really take advantage of the tribal conflicts that already existed, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that started. And then the, the violence started to amp up on the frontier. Mm-mm. So in Mm-mm. July 1755, during the French and Indian War, a band of Shawnee warriors attacked Draper's Meadow. Jeez. Where Mary's family and William's family and their own little family all were living. And that group of Shawnees unfortunately killed and captured most of the inhabitants of Draper's Meadow. Yikes. Six settlers were killed on the spot, including Mary's mother. No. Yeah. 
Then they took the prisoners. See, if her dad didn't go wandering know, off, he, he could have helped. helped. I know. That's what I was thinking, too. <sighs> so Who stupid. knows what he was up to? Yeah. He might have been Daniel booning it. Nobody knows. That's stupid. I know. Anyway, Ugh. so they took prisoners, including Mary and her two young sons. No. Thomas, who was four, and George, who was only two. They're just babies. And her sister-in-law, Betty, as well. Now, William, this I think is interesting. Some sources say that Mary's husband, William, was away at the time, and that's how he wasn't captured. But other sources mm. say he was nearly killed, but he fled. So nobody really knows where William was. The men in this story are really disappointing. <laughs> Just FYI, like you guys, right? Do we have to do everything? <laughs> Right. Can you imagine? Oh. Okay. So Mary is captured with her two young sons and her sister-in-law. By the way, her sister-in-law had a broken arm. Oh my gosh. I know. So she was like severely injured. Anyway, so because Mary, I already told you at the beginning, because she was able to escape and get back home, we know a lot about what happened to her while she was gone because she okay. would tell stories of her captivity and escape to her children and her grandchildren over time. And it was her son, Colonel John Ingalls, about a decade after her death, who would write down her story. Wow. I know. Isn't that amazing? Okay, Draper's Meadows, which really sounds like a subdivision, FYI, mm -hmm. is attacked. Mm -hmm. They take Mary after killing her mother. That is the I saddest know. thing. And her two boys and Betty with the broken arm. Where do they go? What do they do? Tell me everything. And how did she get away? This is epic. Okay, so they capture them. They have the prisoners. And the Shawnee take them first to Lower Shawnee Town. Lower Shawnee Town is located on the Ohio and... I think it's Skipto Rivers, where they intersect near modern day Kentucky and Ohio, right on the river at the border between those modern day states. Lower Shawnee Town sounds like something out of Mad Max. It does, doesn't it? And that was mm -hmm. a, a major Shawnee settlement at the time. Now, here's the interesting thing. Along the journey, like they didn't keep really like strong tabs on Mary. In, in fact, she was allowed to roam in the woods. Well, why didn't she just go? I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to wander over here. See ya. Bye. <laughs> she actually had a lot of opportunities to escape, but she couldn't think of leaving her children because she knew that she Aww, could escape, see? but she couldn't escape with two young kids. See, William, see, George. That's what a parent does. OK. Ugh. Now, when they reached the settlement, that's when Mary was separated from her two boys. No. Yes. Both of them were taken away from her and they were adopted into the tribe. I mean, that's kind of sweet, but poor Mary. How is it sweet? That's not sweet. It's sweet that they, they were they were adopted. It wasn't like they were like killed or they were like made to be like slaves. Like they adopted them as their own. That's sweet. You know, I read a lot about this in researching this story. According to a lot of people who studied indigenous people, one of their strategies when they attacked a village was to take the children under 14 because they found that children under 14 could be assimilated into their culture and raised mm. as Native Americans. That was like a strategy, really? because if you think about it, they were a lot lower in numbers. So mm -hmm. that actually like was a thing. But uh, older adults like Mary were treated as prisoners or servants. And so what we see is she separated from her sons. Oh, and also she separated from Betty with the broken arm. Betty was taken off mm -hmm. into Ohio. She would be imprisoned in Ohio for years. But Mary was set to work. And as a prisoner, she had to do like servant stuff for the Shawnee. For instance, she would uh, sew clothing that the Shawnee got from trading with French traders. And she had to prepare their food. So like they would do the kill and like she'd have to dress it. Mm, but no, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? So terrible. I would be a vegetarian. Like, what would you do if someone just like gave you a deer and said, here, make dinner? <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do do you know chad's uncle used to do that to his aunt june there's a lot of people who still do that like who like hunt and no. like legit there's no, no way. way i'd Absolutely. be, like, I'd be no. like well i guess i'm i'm going hungry if i were meant to dress my own meat no way would i eat meat <laughs> i know like i am like there's no way for real there's absolutely i don't even like making a margarita it takes too long <laughs> you're gonna want me to to dress meat yeah 
I'd be like, forget I know. it. Anything forget on the it. bone scares me. We are the biggest hypocrites, but I will go downtown on a burger. Oh, my God. You know, I like me some butter steak. I will take some steak and put it in butter with some garlic. Right. I, I, I know. Will, I will get all I greasy know. in it. But if I had a, if I had a, no, right. I wouldn't. If I had to cut it up and it like, no, I don't want to eat anything that can look at me as I'm cutting it. You know what I'm saying? Like if it has eyes, like I don't, it means fish. Not, like I'm not doing it. Yeah. Now, if you cut off the head and hand me a nice like roast, I'd be like, mm. I get it. Okay, I get it. The other thing that she had to do too was um, stretch the skins like to make leather hide, which is also kind of a like laborious. <laughs> the you know what I'm skins. saying? Not in a serious. It just makes me way. think of my skinny jeans. <laughs> like, what? Oh, I thought you were going to go to like the Dahmer <laughs> kind of discussion. No. Oh, Jennifer Dart. What? Dark, dark, dark. Did you see that Netflix Yeah, series? I did. I don't want to talk about it right now. Oh, it's so it's bad. disturbing. No, no, no. So anyway, they were working her hard, you know? Yeah, stretching the skin doesn't sound oh, good. No. Okay, but then they had a new job for her. In October of 1755, remember they got her in July. So she's been there with mm-hmm. the Shawnee for a while. They take a expedition on the Ohio. So they follow the Ohio northwest to the Big Bone Lick area, which is about 100 miles away from Lower Shawnee Town. And they went there to the Big Bone Salt Lick to make salt by boiling the brine. And so, yeah, so I know apparently that is a really grueling task to make salt from the brine. I don't know what it entails, but it was there in Big Bone Lick where Mary decided she had had enough and she planned to escape. Oh, my Lord, right now. Oh, Mary, what would you do? Where do you you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere? How do you escape from that? I know. Okay, Okay, tell me. So stop cliffhangering me and tell me. Her son, John Ingalls. Remember I told you that he wrote her narrative? Mm. This is a quote from his writing that describes the reason behind her decision. And he said, my mother being so distressed and being separated from her children and her situation being such a disagreeable one that she came to the determined resolution that she would leave them and try to get home or die in the woods. And prevailed wow. upon an old Dutch woman that was there and a prisoner too to engage with her in the seemingly hopeless and daring attempt. Wow. Yeah. So she found a friend and was wow. like, hey, old Dutch woman, we we need to get out of here. Are you with me? Can we not age shame the, the they, Dutch they, woman? They call her the old Dutch woman throughout these writings. Did she not have a name? That's rude. I don't know what her name is. Nobody knows her name. She was probably German, (laughs) historians think, but Mary and the Dutch woman. They didn't even get her nationality right. (laughs) Like, really, you guys, like, you were going to learn more about her, and I think you'll see why. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) history looks at her with a little bit of disdain. I don't know. (laughs) So, okay. Mary and the Dutch woman asked permission of the Shawnee to go into the forest and gather some wild grapes. Again, remember I told okay. you they weren't keeping them like locked up. Yeah. So they're like, sure, where, where are you going to go? Well, exactly. Literally, where are you going to go? We're 100 miles away from any civilization. And even that is a Shawnee settlement. Where are you going to go? Just the fact that they're like free range prisoners. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, hens, right. they like because w- literally there is exactly. nowhere to go. So they mm-hmm. set off and intelligently, the first thing they did was they retraced the steps and followed the Ohio ri- River back to lower Shawnee Town, which is pretty, wow. pretty daring. Because they're on like, yeah. you know, an indigenous road where you might run into mm-hmm. others. But also they knew that way. Right. Whereas if you go in another right. direction, who knows where you're going to end up? That was really smart. Smart and brave, like mm-hmm, you said. Mm-hmm. No one noticed their, them being gone. Like they were like, hey, did they come back with those berries? <laughs> like, right. You know, they thought they were going to be followed. They really thought that yeah. they were going to be in pursuit 
Um, and so they they like sprinted. Like the first thing they did was like they were hurrying. But as it turned out, um, the Shawnee, they only made like a really brief search. And they're like, yeah, they're probably eaten by wild animals. Wow. Which really says a lot about their situation. Yeah, there's no way. They're like, yeah, some something got him. But I don't know. According to a guy named James Duvall, who wrote a lot about Mary Ingalls and her escape from the Big Bone Lick, um, he said <laughs> that it there is no escape from the Big Bone Lick, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps reeling us back in. <laughs> he says that they really did take a chance because in some cases, punishment for attempting to escape was death. So and they must have yeah. known that. Well, death in so many different ways, like death in the forest, death from the animals, true, true. death from the Shawnee. But if the Shawnee were to find them and realize that they had tried to escape, they they might have put them like that was a thing. That was something that they would have yeah. done. Yeah. Oof. So anyway, um, they did not take much with them. I just want to say they had moccasins on their feet, which, by the way, moccasins are great. Cute. But they're like slippers. They're cute. They're slippers. Yeah, I wear them all. That's exactly why I wear them. You don't climb mountains. You don't get over the apple. Like, that's not proper footwear, okay? So I'm just going to say they're great. Not ideal. I climbed the hill on the dirt road with, like, barefoot, with a cigarette hanging out of my mouth, and a bottle of Boone's Farm. So it can be done. You are just like Mary Ingalls. (laughs) (laughs) It can be done, Jennifer. That's not that big they of a deal. They didn't have a bottle of boons or cigarettes. They had a tomahawk and a knife. And t- it would have been a lot cooler if they did. All they had was a tomahawk, a knife, and two blankets. Okay. okay. Well, what are they going to take? They're supposed to be going for berries. What are they going to like? Just going to take my suitcase. Right, Bye. Right. After four or five days, they reached the lower Shawnee town. That's when they found an abandoned cabin and a supply of corn and an old horse. Oh, nice. So that's good that they found some food. Yeah. And the horse. The horse you know wasn't what? the food, No, right? the horse wasn't You're the talking food. About the corn. They were going to use the horse to help carry the corn. But when they tried to cross the river, they lost the horse. I am heartbroken. I know. This is the most tragic part of the whole story it, right here. It reminds me of the never ending story when Atreyu loses the horse and it's just terrible. And that was my first time I felt heartbreak in a real, real way. I don't remember that movie so much. <gasps> but all I have to say is this old horse is in retirement and they steal him and then he gets lost in the river. That's not cool. That's not cool. So once the corn ran out, though, they had to subsist on what they could find in the wild. So they lived on like walnuts, wild grapes, pawpaws, sassafras leaves, blackberries, roots and frogs. I would die for sure. First of all, I'm not a healthy eater. Right. Right. And I, if I was going to eat healthy and I was starving, I would just eat everything and be like, oh, that was poison. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there, how would I know what to yeah, eat and what not question. to eat? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. They must have had some knowledge in that category. But they did get lucky on at least one occasion because they did run into native peoples on their journey. How is that lucky? Those are the people that just captured them. True. But on one occasion, I'm going to read from my notes here. On uh, one occasion, they came across a Native American man skinning a deer and they hid themselves behind Mm -hmm. a log. Now, the Native had a dog with him and the dog was barking and barking and barking like where the women Mm -hmm. were. He was like, there's someone there. There's someone there. Yes, yes. But he ignored him and kept and like he was spooked because he thought it was like this, like I, a well, ghost I don't or know something. If he thought it was a ghost. Uh, that's where my he thought mind it was went. an enemy of his or a bear. I don't know. But he basically cut his skinning short and hightailed it out of there. And so he left behind a lot of meat and they were able to eat what he left behind. They had a real banquet. Now. Oh, my gosh, Jill. During their journey, they crossed 145 creeks and rivers and by the way neither one of them could swim how is that even possible one of the things they would do is tie logs together with grapevines to like make a raft to help them float across these women they are smart Mm -hmm. they traveled as much as 600 miles in total and averaged between 11 and 21 miles a day Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. In moccasins. That is a lot. In moccasins. They're comfortable, John. Yeah, but they're not like heavy duty shoes. They're very comfortable. 
They're leather. I bet they wore them through. Anyway. I wear mine through, but I have Schwarzenegger okay, feet. So it's November now and the temperature is dropping and it's starting to mm. snow. And the women, they Ugh. can't depend on like wild berries and shit anymore. They begin to get weak from starvation and the cold. Mm-hmm. That's when the old Dutch woman starts to lose her mind. What do you mean? What does that mean? If she didn't lose her mind yet, like she's been through some shit. She should have like I would have been there. I would have been Anna and Eleven already. She tries to kill Mary so that she can eat her. <laughs> she hangry. She That's a hangry. definition of hangry. <laughs> yes. She hangry. <laughs> According to there's this woman who wrote about Mary's journey. Her name was Letitia Preston Floyd, and she actually knew Mary herself and herself was a survivor of the Draper's Meadow Massacre. And she oh said my. her account says that the two women actually drew lots to decide which of them was going to be eaten by the other. So apparently, like at some point, <gasps> the two of them realized that they weren't both going to make it. And they drew lots to see who was going to eat whom. <laughs> you would eat me, wouldn't you? I would not eat you. you. Would. We just had that whole discussion about meat on the bone. You were like, she juicy. <laughs> no, I wouldn't eat you. Well, I'll tell you, if I was that hungry and you started looking like a little <laughs> a like um, mo- drive-in movie. <laughs> I was going to oh, say a hot, hot dog. dog. Okay. <laughs> a drive-in movie hot dog. I would be like, yes. <laughs> like Jennifer, come warm your feet by the fire, dear. Here's some berries. <laughs> Would you really eat me? Would you really lure me to the fire? <laughs> I would I literally wouldn't make eye contact with you. I would like turn you over. But yeah, if I was hungry enough. Thanks, Jill. I'm going to remember that. OK, stop. When you say you're going to remember that, you mean like when yes. we're traveling together and yes. we're in the same room? <laughs> you're going to sleep with right. one eye open. <laughs> Be like, Jennifer, can you hold this butter, dear? OK. <laughs> Mary managed to convince the old Dutch woman to stop trying to murder her. And she tried to... <laughs> She tried to keep her good humor. And here's what she did. You don't want me. I'm just the skin and bones. You don't want this. She promised the old Dutch woman a sum of money when she returned home safely. She's like, hey, if you get me home safe, my father-in-law has some money and he's he'll pay you. He'll pay you for helping return me safe. To not, do eat, not me. eat me. If you do not eat me, <laughs> right. please do not eat me because I will pay you not to eat me. Okay. So they keep going. And then they get to the mouth of a river called the the New River. And then for a second time, the old Dutch woman tries to kill Mary. (laughs) It's not funny, Jill. (laughs) Like I told you, do not eat me. For real, I ain't playing. Remember money? Oh, my God. Please. (laughs) I'm old. You don't want this meat. You don't want this meat. But Mary got loose and outran her. (laughs) Oh, my God. What a shit show. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Could you even imagine? It was in the paper. A New York Mercury article stated that, quote, the Dutch woman attempted to kill her. In order, as it was supposed, to eat her. But Mary, after a fierce struggle, released herself and fled away. It was in the paper. How embarrassing. If you were the Dutch woman, would you not be embarrassed by this article? That's why they call her the Dutch woman. She was probably like, okay, that's fair, but do you have (laughs) to use my name? (laughs) So Mary hid in the forest and she waited until dark. What else can happen to this poor woman? And then she found a canoe. Mary continued southeast along the river bank. So she's she like she gave up on the Dutch woman. She was like, I can't go back. She's going to eat me. I'm going alone. Actually, she left the Dutch woman in a cabin that they found. So she didn't just leave her out in the middle of nowhere. She left her in in a cabin. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mary canoed away on the river, leaving the Dutch woman behind. And she reached the home of a friend of hers named Adam Harmon. And it was about December 1st, 1755, 42 days after leaving Big Bone Lick. And she she mm. actually sent her friend Adam Harmon back and she said, there's an old Dutch woman tried to kill me twice. She's at this cabin on the river. Please go help her and bring her home because she's out of her mind. 
bring bring food food with you (laughs) she may try to eat you (laughs) if she starts smiling like a cat she don't get close just throw the food and run. So Harmon found the cabin, found the old Dutch lady, and he got her in this wagon party that was traveling through Virginia with the goal of returning her home in Pennsylvania, which it did. And wow. so both women arrived home in December of that year, surviving incredible hardships. That is crazy. I know. That that's not even real. Okay, so they get back home. Right, Mary's home now. She's home now. Is her husband there? Because I would be pissed. That would be the first. <laughs> I would just smack him. I'd be like, "Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did you even try to find me?" He was there. He was fine. They were reunited, <laughs> and they huh. resumed farming and living at a place called Dunkard's Bottom until the following spring. <laughs> Now, Mary was concerned about continued Shawnee raids on the settlements nearby, including hers. And so they moved to a place called Fort Voss. Okay. So she she was settled. She filled in. She didn't want to be at Dunkard's right. Bottom because anymore. Because she was worried about the, the Shawnee attacking. And so this, this new For place, sure. they moved to this fort, which was, of course, fortified. And there was a garrison of people who were guarding the residents. So it was it was a safer place to be. Yeah. It's like a, having a fenced in community with a guard. Yeah. And so Ingalls, William Ingalls, her husband, he was he was fine there. He's like, we're going to be fine. We're in a fortified community. And she was like, no, mm-hmm. no, we can't stay here. No, I swear. Stop She's, it. Do you okay? Okay. Do you think she had like post traumatic stress and she was like, "We can't stay anywhere." You know what I mean? I mean, maybe if if I were her husband, I would be like, "I know, right? We're like, fine. It's just your PTSD. Yeah. The Shawnees aren't going to come get you." But mm-hmm. she would. She was relentless. She's like, "No, we have to move away. We have to move away. We can't stay at the fort." Crazy. Okay. So they moved. I hate moving anyway. Right. It's such a pain. So he finally gave in. He's like, fine, be like, fine. Ugh. If it's going to make you feel better, we'll we'll move. And so they moved again and this time to Bedford County, Virginia. OK, you'll never guess what happened. Hmm. Shortly after they moved on June 25th, 1756, Fort Voss was attacked by Shawnee. I swear to God. And uh-uh. Mary's brother in law, uh-uh. John, was killed and her other brother in law was captured. Uh uh-uh. uh. I think she's psychic, honestly, like intuitively, like going through the woods to find her way home. That I was thinking in itself is like evidence that she had something like guiding her, leaving her like Uh she found the canoe. But this like 100 percent is like this woman has to be psychic. There's no way she had to have some kind of supernatural abilities to get through the shit she went through. And then this. uh -uh. I think you're right. I was thinking the same thing when I was reading about her. Yeah. A hundred percent. Well, apparently she forgave her husband for not being around when she was captured. Why? What makes you say that? Because they they would have four more children together. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mary, girl, you should have held out. You should have been like, uh-uh. And in 1762, William and Mary established the Ingalls Ferry across the New River, and they established the Ingalls Fairy Hill Tavern and Blacksmith Shop. Interesting. She and her husband started a tavern on the river. Mm. And she would die there in 1815 at the age of 83. That's in friggin' insane. So she had a good, long, accomplished life. Oh, my. So much. She went so through much. so much. Oh, my Lord in heaven. So tell me, whatever happened... Did she ever see her children again, the original children that were taken by the Shawnee and Betty did her arm heal? So Betty Draper lived among the Shawnee for five or six years. Oh, my God. That's Don Draper's um, wife's name. Oh, my name gosh. You're right. It is Don Draper's wife's name from Mad Men. I literally saw January Jones. Is that her name yeah, in my head? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, it's pretty. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what this Betty Draper looked like, but um, she lived with the Shawnee <laughs> for five or six years and was finally ransomed in 1761. Okay. So she was free. Yeah. She was returned home. Nice. Um, William continued to recover his two young sons. Oh, good. 
So he's good for something. Well, yeah, he they would find out that baby George, who was two years old, he actually died among the Aww. Shawnee not long after he was separated from I'm his so mom. I'm so sorry. I know. Isn't that sad? That is really sad. It's like losing your child twice. You know what I mean? That's really sad. Now, Thomas, Thomas was four. Remember when he was Mm -hmm. he was taken from Mary? He was also successfully ransomed. They found him in 1768. Good. At least she got one of them back. He was almost 17 years old. Oh, damn. He old. Here's the thing. His brother, John, would later comment in the narrative that Thomas had been, quote, as Indian as the rest of them. He no longer spoke English and had become fully integrated into Shawnee society. Wow. Uh Uh-huh. It's almost cruel to take him away at this point, to be honest. Well, actually, they had to ransom him twice because the first time he ran away and ran back to his Shawnee family. Yeah, he did. He's not a part of you folks anymore. He's Shawnee now. He escaped in the night and returned to his family. I and kinda like and that. then <laughs> and then after he was ransomed twice and, you know, his family was pissed off. Right? It's twice. <laughs> they ransomed you twice. You know what, though? If I were like the Shawnee people, I'd be like, can we just like, do we have to ransom him? And get, like, he wants to be with us. Right. What about like 50 50 custody? Like, couldn't that have been a thing? Seriously, I agree. That's 100 percent. Right. Couldn't they think outside the box on this? You're one? absolutely right. Good job. No. I, really? We need to write a letter. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, they had to convince him to stay and he underwent, quote unquote, rehabilitation and education under a Dr. Thomas Walker in Virginia. OK, that sentence just makes me physically nauseous. I know. Rehabilitation. Yeah. Just leave him with the Shawnee people. Did he ever get back to, I guess, like whitewashed again? Yes. Yes, in fact. Shut up, really? Thomas Ingalls. That's a bad message. You're not going to believe this. You know what? I'm also not believing Mary's life, his mother. So tell me. So Thomas Ingalls, after being ransomed twice and rehabilitated, quote unquote, into white society, would later serve as a lieutenant under Lord Dunmore's War in 1773 and 1774, which he fought against the Shawnee. <gasps> yes. No. Yes. That is so cruel. At that point, I wonder how he felt about it. I mean, was he fully indoctrinated into white society? I do not know. It just seems like he must have been broken. Can't even imagine. After the war, he married Eleanor Grills in 1775 and he settled in Virginia. Girl, girl. His ass is just, he's not right to be married. <laughs> like, what? He's got issues. What are you doing? Oh, Eleanor. Jill, in 1782. What? Seven years later, he was away from home. And his wife and three children were captured and kidnapped by natives. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The history of Augusta County by John Lewis Payton doesn't say like which type of he uses the word Indian. So we don't know if it was Shawnee, if it was a different tribe, but they kidnapped (sighs) his family. And when he came to rescue them, his children were killed and his wife was tomahawked. She would survive. Yes, she would survive. But his children were murdered. Mm hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. Anyway, I think in the detours, we can flesh out Thomas a little bit more because what an ironic life. Seriously, right? Dude, I'm traumatized by his life. I don't know which way. I I feel like chasing my tail. Like, I'm so confused. Right. Eesh. One of his children did survive, though, on a happy note. He did rescue the youngest daughter. Some of the sources indicate that others don't. Other sources say that all of his children (sighs) were, were killed. So I'm not sure about the youngest daughter, if she survived or not. I hope that the frontiers men of the world is listening to this. Stop wandering off and leaving your family. Right? I don't. They're like seriously, guys. Stay at home. If Where you are going? living in the 1700s, what are you doing? And you're a white guy on the continent. Just stay home. There's nothing out there for you. Door dash that shit. Just stay home, dude. 
There's nothing there. <laughs> Guess what? Nothing. It's nothing. Let's look over our hits because they're crazy. <sighs> Mary, I just have to tell you, what a woman. I really love her. I know. I love her, too. Tell me about the hits that got us That her. whole idea of tragedy with children. It seems like not only Mary, but also Thomas. Yeah. She obviously was separated from her sons. She lost baby George. And then Thomas lost his daughter. Baby George. I know. She lost baby George twice, in my opinion. And then, Our of favorite. course, your favorite place, on, your, your favorite. favorite place on earth. It just rolls off. It just rolls off your tongue. Big bone, Big bone lick. lick. We were totally drawn Big there. Big bone lick. We were drawn there. How many different ways can we say it with different afflicts? Big, Big bone, bone lick. lick. Big bone lick. Really? We are so immature. Sorry. Indigenous people living in the area. That for sure. Yeah, for sure. This is my favorite. Tell us about pa- Father Tell Petit. Me. No, you do it. You do it. I like when you For you to pick up on him as a white man who was wanting to be with the natives in their society, that's totally Thomas. That is totally Thomas. I wish they would have just let Thomas live with the Shawnee. I know. He could have visited. Joint custody. The mind fuck that had to happen to deprogram, to reprogram. He's a man. He has a soul. He has a purpose. They should have just let him be. It's hard to even fathom today. Isn't it so hard to fathom? I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. What do you think about the fact that Mary, Mary and her husband established a tavern and we were pulled to a tavern when we were in Kentucky? That is crazy. That is nuts. That is crazy. Part of me just feels like she wanted to keep the men at home. So she's like, I'm just going to build a tavern here. (laughs) So they'll stop go wandering off. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like it's going to we're going to have it stocked. They're going to be cigarettes. You don't have to go anywhere. Good point. Good point. So mm-hmm. Mary's story is actually really well known in a lot of circles, c- certainly locally. Um, there's a lot of stuff named after her uh, residence hall at Radford University. There's a highway in Kentucky that's named after her. And then there are monuments. Really? One was unveiled in 2019. Oh, that's so recent. I know. The Virginia Women's Monument Commission dedicated seven statues. And one of them was of her, Mary Draper Ingalls, in Richmond, Virginia, on Capitol Square grounds. Nice. And there's another monument dedicated to Mary Draper Ingalls in the West End Cemetery in Radford, Virginia. And this one's so cool, Jill, because Hmm. it's built using stones from the chimney of a home where she lived. Oh, that is so cool. I know. I would love to go and see that and touch those stones. How thoughtful. I know. That's very thoughtful. So neat. There's also an eight foot tall bronze statue of Mary Draper Ingalls right outside the Boone County Public Library in Boone Stop. County where we were. Stop it. And you talk to people at the Boone County Public Library. I know. It's crazy. I'm sad that we didn't know to go there and see her. Th- that is literally our entire lives. I know. Like we go to all these places and then, and then afterwards, afterwards we're like, back. Oh, dope. I wish we would have known. I know. So, Jill, so silly. she's obviously well known. She's obviously celebrated in many circles. Why do you think we are called to give her a voice? Honestly, I, I can think of two reasons. Mm. First, I'm going to do broad and then close to home, like my reasoning. She is, it kind of reminds me of Gunnison from our Utah story that there are so many things named after Gunnison, but you never like sit down and be like, okay, why is that name? Mm -hmm. Like, why are they naming this? Who is this person? Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing with Mary, like there may be things named after her. or She may be memorialized in some way, but not in a broader context. Like this is an an incredibly an American story Mm -hmm. of survival. Yes. You know, and I think it's really unique to who she was as a person, because I literally would have been like, nope, and gave up. Yeah, agreed. Her strength and determination. It's Mm -mm. incredible what she survived and what she accomplished and what she got through. And then throw in the crazy Dutch woman. Are you serious? I'd be like, Joan, we do not need this shit right now. (laughs) I'd be like, get it together. Right. We do not. No, no, no. You're not eating me. Like, seriously. (laughs) Wow. You couldn't handle me. (laughs) Also, I love that you brought up that she was probably psychic because I believe she was psychic as well. There is no way she could have been through those woods in the wilderness, like 
without having some intuitive ability of how to get to where she needs to be. And her retracing the steps reminds me of how I use my superpowers of getting back. If you take me someplace once, I can always find my way back Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just by doing that. And it makes me think how many other people in history were probably psychic and if not psychic, intuitive for sure. That for sure. I mean, I would love to have that conversation with you too about other figures in history. Detours. Let's talk detours. Let's after talk this. detours. But okay, that, so that was my broad context of oh, why we're talking about Mary. Sorry, I thought but you were here's done. close to home. Mm. Okay. Okay. And you and I have been having conversations. Our patrons on um, our Facebook page have been talking about how shit is really hard right now for whatever reason. It's like we are like, like clawing our way uphill with a bottle of boons. And I feel like when I read this story about Mary's life, I'm like, shit could be so much worse. (laughs) Like I can be like shit can be worse. Okay. That's true. Like I could be running through, through a forest for my life. Exactly. Or stretching the skins. Yeah. Who's doing that? I'm not doing I'm not doing that. You know what right. I mean? Or separated from my loved ones and worrying about oh. if they're OK and and someone trying to eat you all the time. <laughs> I'd be like, no, that would you make things I mean? so much worse if someone was trying to eat me all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Ingalls, for that reminder. I'm, At least someone's I'm not flattered, trying to eat but you. I'm taken. <laughs> I'm married. You can't eat me. All right. Should, you want to? You. Do you want to tell our friends where they can find us? Sure. Check out our website, commonmystics.net. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Common Mystics Podcast, and listen in wherever you're listening to your favorite podcast. But if you happen to be listening on Apple, please leave us a positive review so other people can find us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you in detours. Good night. Bye.